So what does a data analyst actually do? We analyze data, oye. What does that actually mean? And how much do they actually make? And should I be doing this? What does it take to actually be a data analyst? Hello, my name is Tim Ju. I am a data analyst working in tech right now. I've worked at these companies. Yes. And I've primarily worked as a business intelligence engineer, but that can actually go into the data analyst category. We'll talk more about what that actually means later in the video. But today I'm going to explain to you what it actually means to be a data analyst, what are the skill sets that are required to be an analyst, and how you can even be one yourself. It's actually not super difficult as well. A little bit more about myself, a lot of my experience comes from firsthand working in tech, but also working as a teaching assistant at the University of Washington. I literally ate this stuff for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I taught it, I did it all, I worked through all the problem sets, I actually used it in my career, and now I'm here to teach you guys everything that I know. Alright, but first, how did the data analyst role actually begin? Where, where did this come from? Well, so pretty much it all started from the filing cabinet. I know, this clunky old thing. Back in the old days before we had phones, hard drives, laptops, whatever it might be, everything was just on pen and paper. And because of that, everything was slow. Manual, or mundane. So if you think about it, the first analyst just had to look at everything, pretty much just a sheet of paper by hand, by eye, and interpret results off of that. Now, it wasn't until 1960s, yes, 1960s, it really hasn't been that long, that the first relational database model was born. This was first described by a man named Dr. Edgar F. Koch. He was a researcher and a computer scientist at IBM. Yeah, this company. He discovered that if you build a certain set of tables together, you'll increase this crazy concept called learning. This is the one key principle that all analysts hold very dear to their heart. It's learning. It's getting that competitive advantage in front of any other company. Now that was just the beginning and it actually expands further into other database types, NoSQL, data warehousing, and now cloud-based data lakes. But it all started with the relational database, one of the greatest and most powerful ways to actually analyze data. So this then led to one of the most important languages in all of data analytics, and that's SQL. This came in the 1970s, right after the relational database model was created. So this language was groundbreaking and it actually utilized all of the data in a, a way that no one has ever seen before. It was quick and it is quick. To this day, it's one of the most powerful languages in all of analytics. To think that you can pull millions upon billions of rows of data just at an instant is crazy. If you actually conceptualize it, that's like absurd to think about. Ah, oh, good coffee. I'm getting into pistachio lattes lately. Ooh. Highly recommend. So now that you know the context, what does that actually mean now? Well, let's break it down into three different roles. We're gonna start with the basic generic data analyst. Some might call it an associate analyst. Next, there's gonna be the technical data analyst. And then beyond that, there's gonna be the advanced level. And these are the separate pays for each one of these roles. So let's talk about the first basic data analyst. What does that actually mean? So this is where all these stereotypes come from. This is what people think we actually just do all day. And this is the most generic level of being a data analyst and it's someone who just works in Excel. Not to rip on Excel, I know people get a little sensitive about that, but Excel is definitely the very basic form of what an analyst can do. That's at the very bottom of the skill set. For pay range, it's about 60 to 75K at the very entry level, but can also expand further if you go to the senior level or if you dive deeper into financial analytics, which does heavily rely on Excel using the models built in, then the pay range can increase to around 95 to 105K. So this very bottom level, if you just know Excel, you know the, the very basics and fundamentals of all of that, then you can be a data analyst, at least in its very basic form. Next, let's talk about the technical data analyst. Now, this is someone who they'll know some basic SQL and they'll know some Excel as well. And they'll also know some sort of data visualization software. So this could be like Power BI, Tableau, whatever you want to use. And the key here for these type of roles is to do this thing called an ad hoc analysis. Now, it's a very fancy term, but it's pretty much a way to actually dive deep into a data set. In this, you are typically building a dashboard of some sorts, a way to visualize all the data, showcase, tell a little story, right? In the purest form, it is a basic way to to show data in a more nuanced way. Now in this role, at the very beginning, you can start off, I would say around a 75 to 80K range, but then once you get more advanced, or when you become a senior analyst in this type of role, you can go all the way to 95 to even 105K as well. For this specific role, you need to know SQL though. That is what 
all companies are looking for these days for analysts, you need to know it. It's going to be a combination of your SQL skills, your data viz skills, and also your basic data wrangling, which is the manipulation of data. So with all these skills combined, this is the technical data analyst. Now for the third role, we have the advanced data analyst, or in what I like to call it, the business intelligence engineer, or the business intelligence analyst, whatever the company's calling it, right? So this is someone who's going to know some pretty advanced SQL, right? So build store procedures, going deeper into complex joins and sub queries and going into ranking functions like you you know all of these skill sets it's your bread and butter so it's no longer just some basic queries with a few joins and a couple where's no it is literally going to be some of the most advanced sql that you can know so uh, after that it's going to require some more data engineering skill sets as well. You need to know things like the ETL process, probably some pretty extensive knowledge of data warehouses, understanding star schema, snowflake schema, all these concepts, how to manipulate them, how to pull the correct amount of data from them. You're also gonna need to know some pretty basic formats of how to build some data pipelines using something like to use Azure with Azure Data Factory, or you can go to the AWS side and use Redshift, so whichever cloud service that your company's using. You're also going to need to know a lot of Python because for this role, it's going to extend further further beyond. It's not just going to go into some basic visualizations. I want you to actually do some data science work as well. And this goes into some deeper advanced visualization skill sets that you're going to need to know. So you're going to need to know how to pull in Python script, putting it into a you know Power BI software and actually use all of this data. So for this role, because it is so complex and you need to know a lot more than just SQL and Excel, the role will often start at about 90 to 95,000, but I've seen some companies, it can get even higher. You can start off with even 130 k it's crazy but these are the amazons the you know the big tech of the world right now for this role in particular it can also expand further into like the senior level roles as well so for the senior level roles i've seen some pays as high as the 200 000 right at the start these are typically bie2 roles or bie3 they're going to be way higher typically they're going to need more from you they might ask for a master's degree as well these are the more complex ones i would say so how do you become a data analyst well, honestly, it's quite simple. Like I guess that it's purest form. All you need to know is Excel. If you just take a couple Excel courses based off of like LinkedIn Learning or some other online resources, you could dive in right away. Or if you even just grew up with Excel, you'd be fine there as well. All right, editing Tim here. Uh, I really must clarify. So I was like listening to myself and thinking about, I don't actually recommend this. Learning just Excel is good, but the market's been so competitive these days. I don't think that's actually gonna be enough anymore. I'm gonna correct myself here. Only learn Excel if you're gonna go into financial analytics. If you wanna get any other data analytics job, I would really recommend going for what I'm about to say next, which is gonna be to focus on SQL instead. Focus on being the technical data analyst more so than just the basic, because the basic analyst roles, if I'm being honest, they are far far away just it's like they don't exist anymore in the market sadly so excel won't be enough unless again on a channel looks but yeah all right uh, back, back to the video but if you want to go deeper into some of the advanced sides, then yes, I would say learning SQL and these visualization softwares, I, I highly recommend going into those. There are going to be some good courses online as well for those. If you're going to break into data analytics, I would say the big three that you really need to know are going to be SQL, number one, data visualizations, and then Excel, and in that order as well. From my personal experience, as someone who's been a technical data analyst, I didn't use Excel as much as I thought I would have. So definitely the SQL and the visualization sides are, in my opinion, the most important sides. Of course, this is case by case. If you're gonna go into financial analytics, definitely Excel, number one. But in all the other cases, I would say SQL and Power BI are all you really need, or, or Tableau too. You, know? you need to go back to school for this, in my opinion, no. Unless you're trying to become a data scientist, that's where it gets a little different because you need to know some linear algebra stuff and just have a big stats background. I would say that's the only reason why you would need to go back to school for a data degree to be a data scientist. Those are two different things, by the way, a data scientist and a data analyst. If you want to know the differences, I can make a video on that too. Let me know. Now, what does a day-to-day -day life of a data analyst look like? Well, it's quite simple. You live, breathe, and eat SQL like for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> like I can't express to you how much I used it in my past experiences. We would build all these complex queries based off of our different needs and our criteria. And there's a software called SQL Server Management Studio. It's a Windows-based software, and I would literally be living in that all day. Just testing queries, pulling data, seeing which one's gonna give me the most optimal and most accurate results, right? But besides that, honestly, it's pretty chill. You just need to know a couple things and be really good at those couple things and you can be an analyst.
But beyond that, what does a great data analyst look like? I would say it involves two important skill sets. And the first one is someone who's very business oriented. So who's thinking about what is best for the business. So many times, I swear, a lot of data analysts, they will just create, but they're not actually solving business issues. They'll just like create whatever the hell they want. And oftentimes, that's just not the best. Scratch that, that isn't the best. Our manager and your company, they're gonna want results that's actually gonna help them day to day. So because of this, be business oriented. Don't be the reason why your managers have to stay up all night and fix your dashboard or just everything that you made. Don't be the reason why you make their lives harder. All right? So because of this, to be business oriented, you need to be a little more, more analytical, but also you gotta put your UX design hat on, all right? And you gotta think about what the other person is going to be needing and wanting. You need to empathize with them and see, hey, like what's gonna be critical. What is going to be helpful for a manager? What is important here? What do I need to be showing here that's going to actually be important for the company and for the business? The next thing is someone who is also a good communicator of these tangible results. The key here is to be someone who is good at presenting. So you want to make sure that all this data that is coming out, all these visualizations, you're able to speak to them, you're able to tell the story behind them. Oftentimes people just see these charts or these bar graphs or this linear line regression. What does it all actually mean. You are the storyteller here. You are the person who is going to explain what is happening, highlight the trends, and honestly, you're the person who's going to help make these big company decisions. Analysts are at the heart of that. So you got to tell that story, say it with your chest right, and make sure you're actually communicating these results effectively. Now, ooh, almost done with my coffee. Beyond that, let's think about some other things too. With being a good communicator also means you are good at designing. There's nothing that irks me more, that really grinds my gears more than seeing a very poorly designed dashboard. It just hurts my heart, okay? It really hurts my heart. And don't get me wrong, I've done my fair share of very poorly designed dashboards, but at the same time, it just, it just hurts regardless. So for me, someone who's gonna be an exceptional, incredible data analyst is someone who also has those visual design skills as well. So should you become a data analyst? Well, mm, like all things, it depends. It's a lot of living and thinking and breathing tables, charts, and numbers. If you're someone who finds joy in that, like I do, I would say, yeah, this career maybe is for you. Pulling data with SQL and visualizing everything. And if you find any of this interesting to you, then yes, sure, I would definitely recommend it. But with my time at university, I realized quickly that not everyone thinks like this. This is probably one of the more positive things I got out of university. And that is the diversity of thought, people, different majors and groups and careers. And I quickly realized that just as something like computer science or marketing isn't really for me, data analytics could not be for you either. Pick this career if you really know that meshes with the way you are in the way you think more. Huh? That didn't come out right. <laughs> Pretty much if this just clicks with you the best, I would say yes, do it. But the only way I would say you could really figure that out is by actually giving it a shot. So I'll link below some of the courses I recommend. Definitely LinkedIn Learning is a huge one. We've got some good ones on there. And lastly, why did I become a data analyst? Well, in all honesty, it pays well. Uh, I'm joking, but I'm not joking at the same time. Having a starting salary at the minimum of around 80 to 90K is absurd. Like that's crazy. Being in a tech bubble, we might not think that like that's a lot, but when you think about the average Joe who's not working in tech, 80K is like something people strive for. The fact that like we're getting that right off the bat, like starting off is crazy. You gotta put all these things into perspective, right guys? But also, my brain has always been a little bit more analytical. It's been more data driven. I've noticed that when I always make choices, I think about all factors. I think about how this might affect other people or the other things going on in the world around me. I think in numbers, values, visuals, A-B testing, just all of it. That's just the way my brain naturally thinks. So because of that, it was just a match made in heaven. I was meant to be a data analyst. That's the way my brain was equipped to be. If you feel the same way about yourself, I highly recommend the same thing too. Oh, well, would you look at that? Thanks for enjoying the coffee with me. Appreciate you. Yes, with that being said, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys got good takeaways from this, that you understand more of what it means to be a data analyst and what the day-to-day -day life is and what skill sets you need. And even if you want to become one, if you guys have any more questions or are curious about other topics, feel free to let me know. I'm always open to making more videos about this. I love talking about data. It's fun. It's one of my passions, right? I'll definitely be diving deeper into topics as the weeks goes on. But yes, don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Insta and also follow me on TikTok as well. I post a lot on all of these platforms just to showcase more of my life in my 20s, what I'm doing these days, and also just more data topics as well. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Bro, also, please excuse my pimple. I literally, ugh, I get pimples here all the time because of shaving.
Please, please ignore it. Ah, I'm so ashamed.